the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. No other material has the holistic capacity to transform a believer you have to understand this there are all kinds of books that capture in them expressions that are consistent with the christian faith and may minister some semblance of transformation but any transformation that will turn the believer to be christ-like must be referenced from scripture you have to understand this this is doctrine this is how believers become matured i is my prayer that god would take away shadow boxing and immaturity from the body of christ we must be very methodical with our spiritual growth believers should get to a point where they understand the truths of scripture not as an opinion left to the idea of a man of god or a church these things must be truth that are founded upon scripture the gift and the blessing of having a Bible is to be able to help us the things that are written aforetime the Bible declares that they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. I commend you to God, he says, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You focus on any extra biblical material it may attempt to minister some level of information that makes for transformation but only the bible has that holistic capacity based on the information written it is true that all we have here was not all that was written by the apostles that is true bible history already told us that but the bible says many miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded in this book so it's no news even the bible acknowledges that there are other expressions that were not captured here but he tells us this is sufficient to make you anything god says there is nothing you seek as far as life and godliness is concerned that scripture does not sustain the intelligence to give you are you learning now I will never stop saying this till you get it until Jesus comes. Praise the name of the Lord. Because you see, repetition creates persuasion. When you continue to repeat again and again, then these things become the truths that are most surely believed among us. Maybe let me say one more thing again. That every time you open the Bible, please listen and learn now. The word of God has come every time you open scripture there are three things that you are looking out for number one you are looking for promises please say after me promises every time you open scripture what you are searching for are promises promises represent the boundary of god's commitment to the believer as far as your earth work is concerned god is almighty but the system of administering his love and his power is with respect to the provisions that scripture has allowed. God cannot bless a man outside of the allowance that scripture gives. Listen, this is very powerful because this is where if you do not understand this, eventually you will get into superstition. God can do many things, all things, but the operation of jesus christ as revealed from scripture is based on the truths of scripture that means if you want to know how far god can go over your life find what he has said here god is only committed to what he has said not what you want god is not committed to what you want he's only committed to what you want if what you want is consistent with what he has said if your needs have no provision here in scripture then it will not come to pass are we blessed now 
herein lies our confidence as matured believers it is not longevity in church that makes for maturity is the awareness that God does not lie he is a God of integrity he's also a God of ability are we together and that on the strength of the immutability of his counsel if we can find what he said then we can commit him please give us Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 God only does what he said and the Lord visited Sarah please read with me one to read and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah not as Sarah wanted the Lord did not do to Sarah as she wanted he did to Sarah as she said verse 2 same scripture for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time which God had spoken listen carefully this is already a deliverance for someone that means every time you write a prayer request don't you think that because you prayed on it it will be answered the first requirement is that you must connect every request to the scripture that gives you a guarantee that God is this is why scriptureless prayer is useless prayer it's just a dissipation of energy except if you are praying in tongues when you are praying a wordless a prayer that is not word based there is no scriptural platform for God to be committed listen to me God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity but he's moved by his word just because he has compassion towards you does not mean things will be solved he himself has chosen to submit to his word that he exalts his word above his name if someone learning this is sound doctrine this is how believers become matured all these superstitious things sometimes flying around is why a lot of people are puffed up with knowledge that does not produce predictable spiritual results there is nothing you can do against the truth but for the truth are we learning So the Bible contains promises. What has God said concerning me? God has spoken so many things concerning us. What has he said? It is your assignment to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to find it. They are life to those who find them. They are life to those who find them. And those who find, receive finding as a harvest for seeking. Because the Bible says the law is that everyone that seeketh find it. Finding is not for men of God. Finding is not for those in ministry. Finding is for seekers. If you seek, you will find. I want to rise in life and destiny. Oh God, I know I can't be a failure. What is your basis? Bring forth your strong reasons. What is your basis? I'm tired of suffering no no that's not the basis for victory what has the Bible said the Bible says the path of the just for instance is as a shining light are you learning now that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day that becomes your scripture of defense father on the basis of this truth and on the basis of your integrity I place a demand for the performance of this scripture in my life now you that is how to pray the kind of prayer that produces result blind scriptures lamentation will only the Holy Ghost will just come to comfort you because he's a comforter but as far as results listen listen as far as results are concerned believe me if you do not know how to engage scripture you may live a frustrated Christian life are we together so you find in scripture promises number two what do you find every time you open scripture principles principles the second thing you find in scripture are principles the modus operandi of the kingdom this is how the kingdom operates Christianity operates based on a kingdom system and every kingdom has rules of engagement. There is a way God behaves. There is a way. For instance, in Nigeria, 
as a federation and in many many nations across the world there is a way that you want if you want to approach the president or anyone in the presidency there is a protocol is that true if different states want to receive their subvention there is a system a modus operandi so if you become a governor or a commissioner of finance or whatever it is you are enlightened and educated that as far as this territory is concerned this is how you obtain the things that you need to obtain failure to know it you may have a territory that has the resources but it may not reach you everybody say principles principles are called the secrets of the kingdom or the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 and verse 11 the bible says jesus was speaking and here's what he said because it is given unto you to know to know the word know there is not just the word awareness it's not mere awareness it's a level of intimacy It's the same word that is used as a husband knowing his wife to know to so interact that you become one with the mysteries of the kingdom what is a mystery a mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people the military for instance they operate by mysteries they have how they talk there is something that the military can say that if you are a civilian and you are not trained you may not understand what they are saying you would have to be trained in the military for that conversation to be fruitful to you so in this kingdom the bible exposes us to the mysteries of the kingdom i pray and i beseech you by the message of god that you pay attention and take serious what i'm sharing with you these are the weapons of victory we have been given in this kingdom there is no other way we command results outside of this it is not one of the ways it is the way The mysteries of the kingdom so when i open my bible hidden in stories hidden in parables hidden in riddles hidden in the psalms the five books of moses all of them reveal jesus the way there is something in the pentateuch that reveals the character of jesus and the modus operandi of the kingdom are we together when you go to the prophets major and minor there are things you find the poetic books there are revelations of jesus that you find scattered across psalms is a, a spiritual protocols for accessing different dimensions of results proverbs comes to reveal the wisdom of the kingdom as far as living and excelling is concerned you now go to the gospels where jesus himself came as the manifestation of god i've told you why jesus came to the earth jesus came to the earth not just to save us his number one assignment when he came to the earth was as a correction of our idea about god the god that people did not know because until then they had not seen him manifest bodily so there were many ideas that the prophets they depended on the interpretation of the prophets to know god they couldn't have a personal relationship because the holy spirit was not given to all it was prophet joel that said one day this formula for knowledge will be obsolete because the holy spirit will be poured upon all flesh and at that time he will give the fivefold to mature the saints but as far as personal relationship is concerned that veil will be torn are we together now are you learning yes so when jesus came he came primarily as a correction of our idea he came as a marking script so that we now compare everything the prophets told us about him with the manifestation of jesus and look you now see why the father had to approve him before he started because if the father did not approve him that meant that any other thing he did before the father spoke we can say is wrong from the time the father spoke till jesus went to heaven we know that everything he did was correct because the father spoke already that i am pleased with him so when we see the father say i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my kindness we have a right to not believe the father until we verify that statement in the life of jesus did jesus demonstrate the love of the father search the scripture so you find out that he showed compassion 
by feeding people physically he showed compassion by feeding people spiritually when he met a prostitute at the well he did not throw her inside the well is that true he sat down and had a conversation with her when he met publicans and sinners how did he behave so we can now verify that god is love because jesus manifested it once have i spoken twice have you heard that all power belongs to god we have a right to say god you are a liar until we verify in the life of jesus did we see the power of God demonstrated in the life of Jesus? Read your Bible. The Testament is there for your vetting. We see all kinds of signs and wonders. We sing songs. What manner of man is Jesus? He parted the sea. He did all sorts of things. So by the manifestation of the life of Jesus, we can safely conclude that God is all powerful because we do not see any impossibility that happened to Jesus except the time when he could not do any miracle and the Bible took responsibility to tell us why. If the Bible left us in darkness, we say, God, there is something you cannot do. But the Bible tells us that the reason why Jesus could not do this is because of their unbelief, that he himself marveled at their unbelief. And the Bible, Paul himself was buttressing on that and said there still remain a rest for the people of God. Even though they are the people of God, they have not entered their Sabbath. What was the limitation? That they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them. Why? Not mixed with faith. What is faith? Your conviction and the corresponding action you take to honor that conviction. They did not act on what they heard. Faith is the name given to the action you take based on on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his person the name given to the action not just the believing they could not enter his rest and he encourages us he says today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart like they did in the wilderness he says there remained a rest a Sabbath for the people of God are you still in church so when you open the Bible can I tell you this this is the reason why believers who do not study the Bible, believers who do not listen to teachings, believers who do not engage in the ministry of the word will not only be the first to be deceived, they will be the first to be destroyed. Because there is no basis for your security. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Is God already speaking to someone? Believe me, if I stop here tonight, I am still satisfied. Promises, principles. Why do we fail in life? Largely because of Psalm 82 and verse 5. They know not neither will they understand the limitation is not God's ability the limitation is knowledge they know not neither will they understand they walk on in you now see why the worship team was shouting it as our faces that there must be light tonight and I agree with them there must be light over your destiny in the name of Jesus listen believers listen get tired of ignorance get tired of shadow boxing you must be able to know with exactitude the spiritual principles that are connected to the outcomes you desire this is what mastery is about in the kingdom and the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully nobody wins the olympic by mistake everybody who gets to that final round of the olympic was a champion in his own nation yet someone still takes last in that race that means the person was a champion but not champion enough at a global scale so don't just say you are better than someone because you have two unserious christians around and you are the one teaching them by what reference do you think you are serious they comparing themselves with themselves the bible says are not wise you must raise a high spiritual bar Can I tell you this? Those who win the 100 meters race are never trained with 100 meters. 
no if you want to win 100 meters you train yourself with at least 250 meters teacher here maybe this is an idea he won't stop he won't stop till you look just like him he won't stop he won't stop till your life looks like him till won't stop he won't stop till my life looks like him you may not like what i'm saying now but brothers and sisters when the word begins to make you one day you will look at your life and you will need a telescope to look at your yesterday the difference between yesterday and today and you will stand among the overcomers i can tell you how men are made men are not made by giving useless information they are made by the word john 1 verse 3 and nothing without him was not anything made that was made so we have prophecy we have principles the third thing you find in scripture are prophecies the first promises second principles three p's the third prophecies prophecies give you an idea of the end we need to know what tomorrow looks like we need to know what the end looks like that is the cure for fear people only fear when it is unknown scripture has already told us the end of the story both for your destiny and for our time here so we can find comfort based on scripture as a child of god you know number one that you will finish well what is the basis of your confidence jeremiah 29 and verse 11 i know the thoughts that i think towards you say yet the lord god is speaking your situation is speaking you can choose who you believe sayeth the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end so it already prophetically tells you that god already knows that you have an expected end and then at the end of time we know how these things will be i saw a new earth and a new heaven for the old earth and the and the old heaven had gone away and then he came together with us to tabernacle in that city Christ himself being the light of that city we know the end of time so with all the confusion and all of these things everything that is a breaking news is an old news based on scripture the Bible already told us there will be wars and there will be rumors of wars for instance but the Bible also tells us nay in all these things you are more than conqueror so when we act confident in an uncertain world we look like fools except that our wisdom is superior because it comes from the authority of scripture there is prophecy that backs us it gives us hope and hope does not make a shame you see how it is so next time someone tells you i'm a matured christian tell him i, I would not argue with you number one what is Christianity about? Who is Jesus? Why is he here? Anybody who cannot defend Jesus is not even born again. Not even to talk of maturity. Number two, what are the weapons of victory that have been given to the believer? What are they? How can I know that my tomorrow is great? It's a terrible thing to live in an uncertain world. Even at death, the Bible still tells us that we are victorious. It secures us all around. For me to live is Christ. And even in death, it simply becomes for me a door to a higher and a superior realm. So in any case, we find comfort. Is that true? Yes. So you don't fear death. Why? Because in the kingdom, we call death sleeping. And they that sleep, sleep at night. When you are sleeping in the afternoon, it's called siesta because you should wake up. So they that sleep, sleep at night. They use the day to walk. I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh where no man can walk. Why? Because at that night you sleep. And there are two ways to sleep in the kingdom. Number one, you sleep in the mystery that we call death. Or 
Jesus Christ comes to meet you in any case you have slept he told John he said no 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 not everybody will taste of this death physically but one thing for sure is those who have died and we who are alive we will all be changed but the protocol is that those who have died in Christ will be given that honor because they have tasted of this so they will arise and we who are alive and remain the Bible says will be caught up with him that's first Thessalonians 4 or 5 it says comfort one another with this scripture so all around I'm just showing you the the formidability of this faith life many spiritual practices do not have security above this realm when you are gone they just say you have gone to all kinds of places but we know where we are going to is that true why will you not want to come to Jesus with this kind of provisions your destiny your future your eternity everything is secured in Christ this is why Satan fights the gospel please pay attention this is why Satan will do anything to make sure your loved ones are not saved this is why Satan will do anything to make sure that you do not rise this is why Satan will do anything to make sure you don't have the prosperity it takes for your comfort and for the gospel can I tell you this um, I, this is not to glorify Satan but you see you need to study how visionary Satan is there is nothing that he does that is for itself everything he does is connected to one big goal to stop the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same ask Satan why do you fight prosperity that's the same reason why do you fight the bodies of men same reason why should the woman not have a child satan does not have any business with the child his concern is that anything captured in your life please pay attention anything captured in your life becomes satan's business if he finds out that there is potential in it to reveal jesus and to glorify jesus let me repeat that means satan has no business with your job he has no business with your health he has no business with your children if he does not think there is something he need to bring glory to the name of the Lord the moment Satan finds out that there is something in your life that he suspects he doesn't have to wait for you to be born again he suspects that one day with this talent you have if you ever get born again he will not wait until you get born again he will begin to attack it Satan is not motivated by many motivations there's something you can learn from him there is a singular motivation he's motivated by one agenda to stop the revelation of Jesus Christ and to stop the glorification of the same can I tell you this if God takes everything that can reveal him in us Satan will pass you like this and you will beg him to come and you say no he will go to look for where next that glory went to so he's not just looking for you because of you if you don't understand what I'm teaching you will not even understand tonight's teaching at all who have I offended that my life is like that you will stop that kind of statement after a revelation like this you see that now because listen listen I'm not saying those who say that are bad but that's why you came to church the church is a place of enlightenment the condition for an attack is that there yeah, when Satan finds out that you were created in the image and the likeness of God as a baby he pursued children you are an adult Satan pursued children who could not beg they could not talk they could only suck breasts he said kill them don't wait until they grow every child was created in the image of God and I know that one day if that prophet and apostle and everybody arises we're in trouble and now you have become an adult you can use your will in partnership with the Holy Ghost it will not let you go easily ah but thanks be to God but thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph there will be no need for all the arsenals that are given to the believer to make for victory experientially 
if there was no adversary who is determined to destroy us the bible says john chapter 10 and verse 10 it says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for do you know what this means my goodness do you know that i've not even started well we're in church god is speaking if this is all i say we'll close our bible and discuss it next week but i have to drum this thing because this is how to grow are you getting blessed the thief cometh not just let's let's deal with those first four words that means you have no business seeing the thief if there is nothing that is worth stealing nothing that is worth killing nothing that is worth destroying you get the idea now that means the thief is so selfish if you ever see him he comes to you as a verification that there is something in your life that is worth stealing killing and destroying every time you see satan come around you he has already confirmed to you that you are not ordinary this is what the bible is saying hear me that means if without engaging the weapons of victory you are free from satan it means something is wrong with you your freedom should not come from any negotiation with him your freedom should come by superimposing dominion that means if satan sees you without engaging the weapons of victory he should attack you that is proof that you were created in the image of god There are many people who are not facing any attack because they are cold, they are lazy, they are unserious. They have checked you and found out that you don't have any relevance as far as kingdom come is concerned. It's not because you are special, you are not praying, you are not fasting, you don't know the Lord, you are not serious and yet you are not attacked. Don't be flattered. The devil has found that he's focusing on those who can come and save you before he comes to you. I was glad when they said unto me you see that church is a good place it truly is please sit down so the thief cometh not but for to steal please give it to us again to kill and to destroy Jesus contrasts it and says I am come that they may have and they may have it more look up there is a difference between life and abundant life oh what is getting me into this thing this night life and abundant life listen carefully by the way well since this is koinonia let me just caution you lovingly over some of these blind shouts that sometimes when the word of god is coming the energy it takes to receive is the same energy you are wasting in unnecessarily shouting there is a listen i won't say this anywhere this is this is home and god is training us are we together yes we must be thoroughly furnished sometimes i'm, I'm not i don't mean to insult you but but just listen to if if it's to laugh when it's laughable all of us know but some of these shout most times people who do these things are not getting it I'm saying most times not all the time and please don't feel bad I'm not I'm not this is a family no one condemns anyone but it's just a it's just an honest honest word of caution hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Am I seeing well? Is that Her Majesty? I'm so sorry. Please let's celebrate her. Her Majesty, the wife of the Olu of Wari. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. My sincere apologies. Yes. They are part of us. We are family. It's good to hear this kind of thing and turn any kingdom to faith, subdued kingdoms praise the Lord are we together God bless you ma thank you such an honor to have you around where was I I was cautioning I was cautioning and and calling for diligence as the Word of God listen two people acted this way in Jesus's days Mary and Martha is it in your Bible 
Remember the things that are written aforetime, they are for our learning. Martha was running around doing all kinds of things and she was not getting it. Mary sat quietly and was listening. Here's what Jesus said. Martha, Martha, you are worried and offended about so many things. But he says this one thing, one thing is needful and this Mary has chosen to sit down at the master's feet. Now please look up. Because it is true that this kingdom operates by knowledge, number one. Because it is true that you were created in the image and the likeness of God. Number three, because it is true that there is an adversary and the Bible is not silent about him. God decided to invent a formula to ensure that believers remain victorious. And that formula is the word of God in partnership with the Holy Spirit, in partnership with gifts, men and women of God who he has sent. Are we together now? yes that when god grants you access to a spiritual family god grants you access to spiritual voices god grants you access to scripture he grants you access to the holy spirit he has supplied to you the weapons of victory the men and the women of god interpret scripture they instruct you according to jeremiah 3 15 in knowledge and in wisdom that is their assignment to feed you to give you that spiritual nourishment are we together so they give you understanding they give you knowledge the word of god opens you up the holy spirit comes to back you among the many things that the holy spirit does he is the custodian and the administrator of the anointing everything that has to do with the anointing is in the office of the holy spirit what is the assignment of the anointing i have taught you here the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word of god does not look like a lie so if there is no word that proceeds the anointing has no ministry the assignment of the anointing is to validate the claims of jesus as revealed in scripture so when the bible says god heals now the anointing comes to prove that that statement is true if God says, I am able to lift men, you see why the anointing follows the word. This is the biblical strategy for administering the anointing. There must be a statement that you must put on ground first. Something the Bible says should be done. Then the anointing, you can beckon on the Holy Spirit now. Just dispensing the anointing without a scriptural basis the devil will easily steal into that atmosphere and delve people into superstition and all kinds of extra biblical manifestations and there are sincere and well-meaning people who are victims of this why because they were not methodically discipled they were not methodically mentored hallelujah so everything that we share week in week out uh, among other factors spiritual arsenals that are equipping you why are they equipping you so that number one you have enlightenment knowledge but number two so that you will know how to use these tools that have been given to produce results why are your results important john chapter 15 and verse 8 john chapter 15 and verse 8 this is why you need results in your life herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples why do you need results in your life matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 the bible says you are the salt of the earth it says is that true the salt of the earth that means you add value and you preserve your territory you are salt you need that result it then says that you are the light of the world the definition of darkness is the world without you. You are the light of the world. There are names that are exclusive to God alone. Man cannot claim that name. But when it has to do with light, both God and man are light. There are names that he freely shares with us. One of it is he is the son of God. We are sons of God. One of it is he is light. We are light. Are we blessed do you know why 
I believe the Holy Spirit just took me this route because everything that we teach in this house by God's grace must be seen with respect to all the things that are aforementioned when you begin to teach believers mysteries in the kingdom that are not connected to a larger body of truth they, this is where carnality comes in for instance if you begin to teach on things like maybe say wealth and prosperity you begin to teach on things like career destiny and the rest teaching it in isolation to kingdom come teaching it in isolation to the revelation of jesus will only fuel the existing lust in many people you see why some of these teachings seem to destroy but when it is brought in perspective then you see that jesus is glorified jesus is revealed hallelujah can we teach tonight now father open my eyes and let me see please lift your voice and pray for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I felt very strongly stirred. By the way, our series on the various graces, there's one more left. On love but I suspended it because there is another series that you'll be part of there is a grace that can cause men to love God and to love men it is a grace that is at work in this house and um, but we'll leave it and attach it to another series that is coming is that true tonight very briefly and then we we'll pray I'm teaching on the spiritual pathway to greatness please I pray that you pay attention this is a very powerful teaching that will be relevant both for you your loved ones and those who are connected to you it is important that we learn the ways of God the Bible says that in the last days when the mountain of the Lord is lifted above every other mountain and every hill it says nations will come and men will say come let us go to the mount of the lord the house of jacob and he will teach us his ways the spiritual pathway to greatness the bible clearly tells us that everybody has a great destiny in christ everyone born of god and everyone currently walking upon this earth right now has a great destiny in christ in hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 paul was speaking and he made a quotation that was referring to jesus but then by extension to his church and to believers in general then said i lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O god that means there is no such thing as happenstance or mistakes that everybody who came has something connected to their lives and their destinies as far as god god's predeterminate counsel is concerned no one walking on the earth is useless no one walking on the earth regardless how you arrived here provided you made it here there is an allocation as far as destiny is concerned for you if you're with me say amen, amen. this is very important the bible lets us know that in christ that we can have great destinies and that greatness is the heritage of the saints not just godliness but greatness these are some of the benefits and the provisions that we have as sons in light the heritage of greatness is our birthright the heritage of greatness is god's desire for every single one of us are we together philippians chapter 3 please let's read from verse 13 and 14 
Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 and 14 lets us know we have a great destiny i count not myself to have apprehended he says but this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind i reach for to those things that are before uh-huh i press towards the mark of the price of the high calling apostle paul says that he has a high calling his calling is not an ordinary calling his calling is a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Everyone say, I have a high calling. One more time, say, I have a high calling. That means there is nothing ordinary about your life and my life as far as destiny is concerned. How about the heritage of greatness? Genesis chapter 26 and verse 13. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 13. It says, and the man works great. Say amen. amen. And went forward. Say amen again. Amen. And grew until he became very great. A version says, and he began to be great. That means there was a day he was not. The man works great. He went forward. He grew until he became very great. Why? Because Isaac was coming from Abraham. And there was that covenant of greatness. Genesis 17 and verse 6. Genesis 17 and verse 6. Our heritage of greatness and an enviable destiny in Christ. I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. Say amen. amen. And kings shall come out of you this is a promise now you see whilst you hear the holy spirit reveal this to you you are tempted and even manipulated by the devil to think of your background and you're looking at where you're coming from you're looking at all the things that have happened in and around your life and like nathaniel you can say about yourself like he said about jesus can anything good come out of nazareth let's start the scripture in psalm 71 and verse 21 the bible even tells us that not only does god desire for us to be great but that the greatness he's given us can still increase he says thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side so we are examining the spiritual pathway haven't established the fact that we have a high calling and we have an enviable destiny in Christ we have established the fact that it is not sin and it is not anti-Christ and anti-God for the saints in light to desire greatness because God put it in everyone to be great is that true hallelujah Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 this is the beginning of the encounter that Abraham who was an idol worshiper from Ur of the Chaldeans. He would meet the God of the Hebrews who would later become his God and have a covenant with him that would be, become the basis for the coming of Jesus and even our redemption. 12 verse 1 and 2. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you, if you love Jesus, read verse 2 with me. Ready? Read. And I will make of thee a great nation. Uh -huh. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Just stop there. As at the time he was telling Abraham this, it had not yet happened to him. This was a prophetic word tied to conditions that if met will release and actualize this word. Are we together now? So he's telling Abraham, I know you are an idol worshiper and you have your house, your family, but I have chosen to call you. Now, when you study from scripture, the first person that was called was not really Abraham. It was his father, Terah. But the father did not meet the condition that made for this blessing. And now God comes to call Abraham. Come out of your father's house. Come out of all of these places. Because this is what I want to do. This is your destiny. I want to make of thee a great nation. I want to bless you. I want to make your name great. 
thou shalt be a blessing in fact let's read verse 3 verse 3 please give it to us it says i will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee there is a revelation here i want you to learn for every one person who curses you there are many them who blesses who bless you you see the ratio i will them that bless you him that curse you there are always more people willing to bless you and partner with god over your life than one person who may want to curse you so if the person in your village is one we are here the family is here the angels are here and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed now you may be tempted to say that this is just for abraham but paul gave us perspective in his pauline epistle that when god made this promise it was to abraham and his seed d that seed being christ and galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 says and if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that means what he told abraham through christ can become our reality you see the connection now it is from abraham through christ now it is our reality so greatness is our destiny and when i say greatness i don't mean some of this carnal pursuit for greatness that has no kingdom perspective remember that we already gave a background tonight that everything that we seek and everything that we communicate it is the whole counsel of god but it is res with respect to the revelation of jesus and the glorification of the same he says and i if i be lifted from the earth i will draw all men is that true and i've shared with you that one of the ways that god gets glory is by glorifying the sons every father is glorified when his sons are glorified john 17 and verse 1 jesus lifted up his eyes unto heaven and he prayed a prayer and he said father the hour is come here is the protocol for god being glorified glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so if the sons are not glorified the father cannot be glorified this is the principle of shared dominion the father does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the son the son does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church cannot glorify herself her glory comes from her dominion over the cosmos principalities and powers inclusive so everyone in the k that has the glory that they receive dominion over creation is how the glory of the church is revealed the dominion of the church is how in partnership with the holy spirit is how the son is glorified and in the glorification of the son the father is glorified no confusion this is the protocol have we learned today but there is a biblical pathway and i'll be very fast over this so that we'll pray many believers do not know that there is a protocol to greatness they desire to be great in ministry they desire to be great in business in career and so on and so forth and for many people um, we just guess and shadow box our way and we're not able to attain that level of spiritual efficiency to rise so that we can do much for the kingdom now in your desire to be great the first information i want to bring very quickly tonight is that with respect to greatness there are two principal seasons in the life of everyone with respect to greatness with respect to the subject of greatness there are two principal seasons in the life two principal seasons are you ready the season number one is called the season of preparation please write it down the first season that every believer in christ who desires to do much for the kingdom especially at this end times there is no instant manifestation in the kingdom the season of preparation please pay attention to the things you'll be learning the season of preparation It is important for you to know that if you are not prepared for anything on the day of manifestation you will fail is that true even in our, our human context 
there are students who prepare for exams and they excel there are people who have to prepare for interviews for promotion and if they prepare and they do write the interview or whatever it is in whatever form the interview comes when they excel they are promoted and then they increase in rank that is how it is also in the kingdom two major seasons very quickly the season of preparation now there are three phases under this season i want to rush very quickly there are three phases under this season of preparation the first phase is called the phase of discovery please pay attention the phase of discovery you will never be able to actualize destiny and you will never be able to walk in the fullness of your call until you go through this phase of discovery please look up many people violate this phase of discovery and yet they want to be mightily used by god yet they want to become influences and references across territories it does not happen that way this is the spiritual protocol non-negotiable no exceptions the season of preparation and the first phase in that season is the season of discovery are we still together what do you discover number one your first discovery in life if you want to be great is to discover god discovery god god almighty that encounter with the god of the bible is the first thing anybody who wants to be great the kingdom's way you must go through that phase of discovery hear me the first thing you discover is not the family you come from in order of importance the first thing you discover people discover all kinds of things but god the scriptural basis for this is found in genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning god that is the spiritual protocol genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning the first four words recorded in the bible in the beginning of anything you start with god in the beginning of business god in the beginning of ministry god in the beginning of marriage and a home god in the beginning of parenting when you violate that formula you have compromised on greatness god's way now you can route greatness through some other formula and then face the consequences of the side effects that come with them are we learning now in the beginning now most times people involve god but he does not take that first place we add him like you are putting salt in soup and we just add him go okay god so you don't harass me okay you are here no the protocol is that he must be the author otherwise he cannot be the finisher if he's not the author he will not be the finisher are we together now yes in the beginning god so you discover god we see this in the life of moses i wish i had time but i want us to pray but just write for reference in exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15 exodus chapter 3 the text for this is 1 to 15 but give us verse 13 for the sake of time the bible tells us about this hebrew boy who was saved from death and then he ran away from egypt and was at the back side of the mountain tending jethro his father in lordship and then he's open to an encounter before he discovered any other thing he discovered god the god of the hebrews moses said behold when i come to the children of israel and shall say to them the god of our fathers hath sent me to you and they shall say unto me what is his name what shall i say unto them very good question and god said unto moses yad hey wah hey yahweh i am that i am and he said thus shall you tell them it is true that they want to be delivered but this is what i desire i desire that they know me i am has sent you are we together 
so the first thing you have to discover is God most people don't pay attention to God can I tell you this in your spiritual training with God let me give you an advice and you can use this as a template to mentor other believers when you are starting with believers don't start teaching them things about success prosperity when you really want to mature believers this is the way God led us this is the way God led our fathers this is the way God led people from scripture when you meet God he does not talk about any other thing yet himself until he reveals himself so when you are training believers you must take dedicated time to expose them to God everything God passion for God fire for God then when that foundation of God is settled you can now begin to delve into other subjects if you compromise this you're going to have people who are lopsided in their growth the formula is in the beginning God the first thing you discover is God number two for the sake of time the second discovery is yourself the second discovery is yourself now that you have discovered God you can discover yourself if you do not know who you are Sinaj taught us in her song that if you don't know who you are there are many things you will not be able to walk in you cannot walk in power you cannot walk in miracles you cannot live a life of favor why you don't know who you are the nation of israel forgot their identity that they were a covenant people and when they were sent to go and spy the land they came back with an evil report they said we were like grasshoppers god didn't say it satan didn't say it they said it to themselves it's not like satan said repeat after me you are grasshoppers we are grasshoppers no no by themselves they call themselves grasshoppers i'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles i live a life of favor i know i'm walking in power i live a life of favor very important you must know who you are we teach in our school of ministry and 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 there's a course where we teach the students who you are you know and i teach them in that course that there is something called identity crisis let's borrow two minutes of their lecture there is something called identity crisis you know what identity crisis is identity crisis is the resultant effect of not comprehending your worth the moment you do not know who you are the devil and men and this bedeviled world will paint a picture that you are not there are many people today who are under needless pressure trying to be who and what they are not it's not in the blueprint of their destiny because i taught you here remember I don't know what discussion we're having when i taught you that psychologically speaking there are certain indices that measure fulfillment is that true yes one of it is security another is variety one of it is growth another is love and acceptance there is a craving in the human nature for love and acceptance and chances are that if you have not stayed with the word are we together now yes like Bishop David Oedipo will say, to find out your picture from scripture. To be able to find out, this is what God has said concerning me. This is who I am. Based on what scripture said. Not based on what your mind has said. Not based on what your background has said. Was it not Paul that said, there is as it were many voices. And that none of them is without effect. Your background has a voice. Remember who you are failures all through and you hear that voice then unfortunately and i know and i pray that it's changing thank god for christian schools but if you are not fortunate to go to a school that calls upon the name of the lord now you hear another voice added to that negativity by by teachers and all of that 
they look at you and say you are dull you are almost demonic i don't know how you got here i don't even know where you are going and i can tell you because you respect them you will believe it and then with every sense of respect and apology parents have a major role in in destroying the self-worth of children by the time you begin to minister words curses and words that are not consistent with scripture by the time an average child is 10 12 years subliminally he has already received all kinds of suggestions about who he is so now that they think they are weak the devil will now begin to market templates that can make you belong that's why people join occultic societies that's why people join all kinds of things they say they want to belong when satan came to jesus the first test was the test of identity the first test the very first test was a test of identity if you are truly the son of god turn these stones to bread jesus said i don't need to prove to you the voice already spoke that i am his beloved son man shall not live by bread alone but every word you had the word when he announced it everything under heaven had it including you don't ask me that question you already know i'm the son of god so when life and friends and society sadly and the sociological context of our world now forces you to do things and be things to show you are great you can tell them no 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 i'm a civilized person but i have limits i know who i am don't just tell me to dress the way you want to show i am civil to talk the way you want to live the way you want no within the boundary of of a civilized world i will conform to that which is an advantage but i know who i am based on scripture i am the beloved of god behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in that we are called the sons of god there are many names that the bible calls us light salt ambassadors kings priests are we learning now so you discover god you discover yourself the next thing that you discover under that stage of discovery is you discover your abilities your giftings and your abilities please pay attention please pay attention there is always a rod in your hand oh dear moses that is the rod you will use to work signs and wonders it is not only god you discover it is not only yourself you discover there is something god has given you that is the rod you are going to use moses be careful to not throw that rod one day you will need it to pass the red sea one day to become the symbol of your leadership can i tell you this everyone here seated looking at me following online and will be following by way of rebroadcast or whatever platform it comes through can i tell you sincerely there is something god has put within you that the world is desperately waiting for to receive this is not just some motivational talk this is truth based on scripture nobody came here empty everybody came here as an expression of the fullness of the life and the power of jesus if you are joseph we need your leadership and your ability to interpret dreams if you are deborah we need your strength and your dexterity in war if you are moses we need your passion to be able to communicate with god and prophetically drive the people out of captivity everybody in scripture that was used of god there were things god gave them david could sing he used that grace to write the psalms today that has brought all kinds of deliverance david was a warrior and he used to fight valiantly in his lifetime david had leadership everything david had eventually was featured in the palace what do you have in your hand that was what the lord told moses what do you have in your house second kings chapter 5 second kings chapter 4 please 4 i meant to say the bible says there was a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet 
second kings 4 from verse 1 she said unto elisha my servant thy husband is dead and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the lord and the creditor aha uh -huh, the creditor is come to take him to take unto him my two sons to be born men next verse please and elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee and he asked a question he says tell me what hast thou in your house hear the woman's reply this is the reply of many of us when destiny calls on you what do you have in this house of earthen vessel here's what we say nothing thine handmaid had not anything in the house except a pot of oil i have nothing except an ability to sing i have nothing except great charisma and leadership prowess i have nothing except passion and hunger for god i have nothing except the ability to be trusted be careful what you call nothing be careful what you call nothing i have nothing except some degree of business acumen i have nothing except that when i sleep whatever i see in my dream truly happens i have nothing except the dream that i have that i saw myself on a crusade ground while i was sleeping on a mat in a hut i saw myself speaking before nations that's all that i have he says what do you have you must discover what you have can i tell you this every great man that you admire today whether in the kingdom or in the secular whether in ministry in politics in business they were men and women who among other factors got to a point in their lives where they discovered that there is something valuable that god has given me hear me your sense of self-worth among other factors is tied to the perception of the value you have about yourself we live respectfully speaking in a very fake world today where everybody tries to do this and leave this if you are not wearing this oh how how much is your shoe two thousand naira and people laugh as two thousand naira did you make it yourself and people laugh and make you feel stupid and you stand there wondering what to do and then you go out of your way to live a fake life you've heard me say don't fake what can be real Your self-worth is never about any exterior thing around you. Thank God for the beauty, the glamour, the grace. That is wonderful. But if you put your trust in anything outside you, you are insecure. Can I tell you, most of the things that we face in our world today, especially as it makes for interpersonal relationships and all of that, they are a derivative of this secret frustration. Psychologists have said it and I've taught you again, that you look at life from the lens of the perception of your value. If you feel you are not valuable, you will interpret life from the lens of that frustration. If you are a happy man, the world is a happy place for you. If you are a sad person, the world is a sad place for you. If you are a godly person, in the midst of all the decadence that goes on, you can see God, you can see what he is doing. If you are someone who is a failure, you would look at life from the lens of your experience. What seest thou? It's a, it's a report card. Is God speaking to us tonight? So the first stage when you are preparing for greatness is discovery discovery of god as the almighty the beginning and the end the one who holds your life and your destiny and then number two discovery of yourself so that you become healed once and for all from the scar that society will try to bring as a result of the injury that they will give you for not trying to conform to certain patterns that society depicts to measure greatness so if you do not find 10 cars in my house for instance if you do not find a great mansion for instance if you do not find me wearing all the designers that should be nothing is wrong with these things in themselves if you don't see me speaking in a certain way if you don't see me snapping in front of an expensive vehicle society says you are failure and many of us have been deceived to believe it 
so we live our lives in secret and open frustrations trying to be what God already said you are are we blessed and then the discovery of your potentials I first heard this from the lips of my greatly revered mentor in life and in death Dr. Miles Monroe when I read his book on discovering your potentials when he said here's what he said that the wealthiest place on earth is not the gold mines in sub-saharan Africa around it's not it's not the oil mines in Nigeria and Iraq and all of that he said the most expensive the wealthiest place on earth he called it the symmetry why because that is where books died that were not written that's where dreams died that did not come to pass and he said little did he know that he would not live so long he said his assignment was not just longevity alone his focus was efficiency that Jesus lived for 33 and a half years and his impact till eternity will continue to be felt and he gave his all and truly he died empty one of the last books he wrote before he went to be with the Lord is called passing it on the principle of transgenerational relevance and legacy a man that cheated death indeed are we blessed you must find what it is that you have in your hands can I tell you this when the woman was saying nothing except a pot of oil the pot was hearing her and the oil was hearing her and here's what the oil was saying you call me nothing the same way your writing ability is saying do you know you can write about revivals is it not Robert Lerden that wrote one book God's generals that set fire today only God knows how many ministries have come from that book all kinds of books gifts Billy Graham discovered that he had the ability to love the Lord and to communicate effectively and he deployed that gift in his evangelical operation and today arguably one of the greatest evangelists in modern history who has lived what do you have in your hand what do you have in your house it is time to go back and stay with the Holy Spirit and take intentional inventory of everything that constitutes an advantage in your life because everything God gave you that constitutes an advantage will be used for your destiny can I tell you this Satan will usually flash to your face all the negative things around your life many of us do not see anything glorious about ourselves you are poor he will make sure you see that one you don't speak well he will make sure you see that one you spend 15 years in the village he will drum it to your ears but the wonderful things God has made out of your life he will not allow you see in the name of Jesus may you see clearly can I tell you this our fathers of faith in this nation fathers of faith across Africa every one of them got to a point where they had to deploy that gift that God gave them to be able to serve the purposes of God today if you do not find that rod in your hand you will be ashamed when you stand before Pharaoh because there will be nothing that would demonstrate the glory of God it was the rod God gave Moses that was used to prove the almightiness of God if you neglect your gift there will be nothing in your life to prove indeed that God is mighty over you you must obtain grace from God seated here looking at me following in all the overflows outside from whatever nation whatever TV station there are people listening to me you have dreams God has planted things in your life can I tell you this when it looks like certain individuals are superstars the difference between a superstar and whatever is this discovery nobody is intrinsically exceptional above any other person no everybody born of a woman was once a baby in the hand of that woman even if you were born royalty you were still a baby 
Jesus as the son of God did not automatically become savior even though he was the word he had to go through this system of discovery at age 12 the Bible tells us that he was at the temple what do you think he was doing at the temple he was learning everybody said discovery pay attention to this teaching because many of us are superstitiously hoping that destiny will just happen we are superstitiously hoping that greatness will just happen one day go better we say in this side of God's kingdom and it is so wrong provided you don't do anything until that one day more than admiring great people more than commending people who have done exploits in the kingdom whether in music whether in career in politics don't just sit down and clap for people use their lives as an inspiration that this man was once a baby in the hand of a woman what is the difference between this man and me not in a competitive way not in a way that communicates jealousy but in a way that challenges you greatness is simply the world acknowledging you for serving them effectively with your gift the feedback you receive from your world and your generation for effect.